Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I am Ponchasu, and welcome back to my Vodian playthrough slash tutorial. Now, I did not come into this video prepared because you see, usually when I start my videos, I tend to, you know, dedicate at least a few minutes to thinking into about what I want to talk about, or the strategies I want to teach you, or this kind of those kind of similar things in order to, you know, be better prepared and create something that's a little bit more professional. However, professionalism is not the only thing I care about uh, on this channel, as you may have already guessed by now. In fact, I'm pretty sure you have, if you are indeed a viewer of mine. No, 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 no. What I... <laughs> What I really care about is, in fact, being in a good mood, because I'm the kind of person... Ooh, that's an enemy scout ship? Yes, it is, so it's not a problem at all. Anyway, what I really care about is being in a good mood, because I'm the kind of person that has very, very rapid and frequent mood swings. Sometimes I'm really ecstatic about something, sometimes I'm really annoyed or sad or in pain or whatever, and then it's not very easy for me to get over it, especially when I need to record a video, you see. So, I like to strike it when the iron is hot, like it is right now, for example. Because, you know, it's much... Whenever I make a video when I'm legitimately in a good mood, it's much better for pretty much everybody involved. Oh, wow, they recolonized. Did not even notice that. Anyway, yeah, like I said, it's a much better for everybody involved. I am a pretty good actor, and I have recorded videos in the past where I was in a, actually a really horrible, disastrous depression filled mood in the past and you guys haven't noticed which uh, I'm really thankful about and I'm definitely not gonna tell you which videos were that uh, you wouldn't be able to find it if you were to look now I don't think but it's much better for me to just go into this like smooth spontaneously and just enjoy myself and dive divulge deeply divulge deeply can you say that I don't know I'll look it up later after this video anyway and dive deeply into the Pray and just matter about the cravers because that's what we're all here to do. Now, of course, I do have the added challenge of having no idea what the boss I want to talk about this video because, all right, let's try and uh, keep it, keep my excitement under control. I mean, not necessarily too much under control. I do still want to be crazy as I always am. But hold on a second. No, no, it's already colonized. Okay, so you just stay here. And actually, 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 I could attack the system apparently because it is in my sphere of influence that is a tempting thing to do unfortunately I don't think my actually my shields my no they only have 18 men on each ship they will get more so in the next turn I might be able to invade sync and maybe deal some damage so let's wait and maybe I'll be able to take it over which would be nice I don't want any more cravers scum to reproduce near my borders murderers have huge following as we have discussed last time in this uh, 10 we're gonna have our new election which is uh, uh, fine as well man I'm gonna have to actually work on getting s actually I mean I don't necessarily need the religious uh, party to be in power anymore because uh, I'm not gonna get it fast enough for it to matter. The next time I can declare war on the Cravers, I'm gonna kill them regardless. So, I don't necessarily need the religious party at all. So what I could think about is, uh, well, going for some kind of different party, like for example the Industrialist Party, which I'm pretty sure has a fairly large support in my, in my empire right now. You cannot see it, unfortunately, because it's not technically speaking unlocked, it's uh, the statistics of support for non- not unlocked uh, parties within your government are not visibly tracked but it doesn't mean that there is no support for those parties and if I push the support just a little bit further maybe a new industrialist party will pop out which would be a pretty nice thing indeed I'd love to have a mix of militarists and industrialists in my empire it's something that I personally really really do like as a warmonger and Vodiani in particular however I don't necessarily need it either too much because, well, we are about to be in a war soon and also in a war against the Sophons and the Lumeris as well, which is gonna be a free side war and you know what is good for free side war? You guessed it, a Jinguist Paradise to make our people even happier, although looking at my systems, happiness is not exactly something I need to worry about right now. So I admit, right now having a different kind of main leading law, or however you want to call it, would be nice, but uh, it's not necessarily a deal breaker for us. Let's send a probe to, I think it is, it's sometimes a little bit hard to tell, I'll tell that, about which locations you have scattered and which you haven't, but I'm pretty sure there are no plans in here, but it's always better to be safe than sorry, and let's check around here. 
just to be sure. Now, I'm sure, however, that there are... Actually, am I sure that there are no extra separate systems like Cheng? I think so. I don't quite remember how I disguided Cheng, but I'm pretty sure I disguided via quest, which revealed all separated systems. And it only showed me Cheng, so I'm pretty sure there are no other surprises waiting for me to die. However, there could be systems that have just a very long line of connection to their home constellation, so it's always good to check. Let's select all of my ships, because yeah, now I don't have any essence gathering modules on those, so might as well keep on going and keep on searching. So, we found Nihau and explored 75, no, it's just half of the galaxy. It feels like I'm behind, but it's not really that, but also, oh yeah, molten gas giant. Am I right? Yes, a burning gas giant, to be more precise. I don't remember, I don't remember if I talked about this already or not. I probably did, because I admit, I like to brag sometimes, but... Uh, you know, you guys know that the reason you are actually seeing those gas giants in the game, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of my my fault. Or actually, thanks to me, rather, I, than my fault, because frankly, I think that burning gas giants are awesome. So yeah, I, I remember early on in the game's development, there were only, like, cold gas giants being planned at Alice, and I talked to the devs and they were like, hey, you do realize about the scale of the classes of gas giants, so I told them about five classes and how each gas giant is different and how the hottest ones, they rival brown dwarfs, so yep, that's what we have right here. And they literally do have clouds of... Uh, clouds made of out of iron. Yes, clouds made of out of iron. It's pretty effing awesome if you ask me. And uh, yeah, personally I'm really into this kind of stuff, so that's why I mentioned it. It's, and also to brag, I suppose, yes, but I really wanted you to just know the trivia behind the planet, because, like I said, burning planets that are not quite suns, but tr stars, not suns, blah, that are not quite stars, but trying very hard to be, yeah, I, I really personally like those kind of things. Anyway, let's entertain, there isn't much to do for us now that there is no war, we can support different parties. Now, like I said, there is actually no reason for me to support the religious party, because, sure, if uh, I were capable of making them actually get in the lead in this election, then I could attack the Krivers right away. And there is actually no harm in me trying. Do you know why? Because no matter what I do, the military support will remain broad because they have such a humongous support within my entire empire. But if I do get the religious part in the lead right now, well, then I'll be able to attack Kravis right now as well, which would be actually kind of awesome, if you ask me. So, let's try to do this. There is no harm that can come of it. If somehow religious gain too much power and the militaries start to die down, I'll just spam some more ships and militarists will be... military support will rise through the roof again. In fact, it's something that I think could be changed some... Ah, uh, no, never mind. They're not in the lead, as I thought. Military support is something that could be changed somewhat because it's way too easy to actually make the militarists surround the government. Not, not even if you're a mon warmonger, but also if you just, like, make almost any ships defensively. Which, of course, makes sense. Like, if your civilization is endangered by the enemy civilization, it makes sense that your people will try to rally up behind the war effort and try to fight back against the impending doom. Sure. But one thing is logic, the other thing is gameplay. And I personally, I do care about gameplay the most. Oh yes, score victory, the thing that nobody ever cares about, pretty much. Anyway, like I said, I'm the kind of person that really cares about... Uh, what was I talking about? I care about something the most. Oh yeah, gameplay the most, over necessary logic and whatnot. That's why, I mean, oh, gameplay and just the enjoyable experience of uh, games that we play. That's why, for example, I'm really happy that this game has sounds in space, because it sure makes no sense, but... It sure is cool to watch a space opera with sounds rather than without any sounds, right? So yeah, that's the reason why I'm willing to suspend my disbelief. No, yes, suspend my disbelief in order to see some things that are maybe not very logical, but at least makes for some good gameplay value. I don't even remember what I was talking about when I started this topic, to be entirely honest with you. But I don't think it matters. Some fleet was detected by my rabbi prince or whatever. Don't care. Let's start the invasion efforts, because we can. So ground battle, wow, they have nothing. I guess we could infiltrate. No problem whatsoever. And the enemy system is mer- <laughs> And the second I killed the system, the Lumeris created an outpost. Really, guys? You didn't even clean- the I didn't even manage to clean and eat the corpses. And you already started making plans on when to, you know, when to plop down your beaches, or where to make a ski resort, or where to plop down a casino. You don't even care that there is still blood in the air, you just 
in the air. Wow, that uh, must be a lot of blood then. You're just gonna use the bones of the murdered cravers as, you know, ingredients for your uh, cereal. Cereal? What am I talking about? You know, the thing that you make buildings out of, this very tough, not very, but relatively tough. It's not pavement for crying out loud, it's not cereal. What do I think about cereal? How is it called? It starts with a C or a P, maybe. <laughs> I hate those kind of things. Concrete, there we go, I knew it did. All right, what was I talking about? I have no idea, let's move on because it's way too silly. How long until I can murder things because I'm being mentally unstable for not from not being able to 110 until I can murder, good. I need that in my life. I'm a very evil person, I know, and I'm proud of it as well. You just stand in here and guard Ni Hao for no reason whatsoever. That almost sounded like I said Ni Hao, but I didn't. Even though I do actually study Chinese lately, because, I mean, why not actually? A lot of my friends speak Chinese, so I feel like I will be trying to be cool with my friends and learn Chinese as well. Besides, it's actually a pretty cool language. Anyway... Yeah, this fleet, I don't believe we need to watch this kind of engagement. We've seen it times and times again. I'm gonna wreck the enemy. Let's go for... Mm, actually, yeah, let's go. For, let's have a quick look. The enemy is definitely gonna go for a prudent kind of approach. So let's go for an invasive, because this way I can get very good range from my big ships and attack the enemy from short range with good effectiveness with my racks. Let's do just that, but let's not watch it, because there is literally no reason to do that. Okay, so there was a draw. I dealt surprisingly little damage. I have to be honest, I expected more of you, dear sir. I really, really did. But then again, he is a defensive hero who was supposed to deal with the missiles, and I guess I maybe offered it with the missile defense, and instead don't have enough DPS on this fleet. So that's something to look into. Maybe I have too many kinetic weapons for the kind of attacks I'm doing over here. That's something to consider. And alrighty then, anything else? Well, I have a few ships to kill because I might as well. Stop. Why? I don't know why the system defaults to evasive when I want to gain some more experience from matter. Because, you know, matter obviously is supposed to give you experience. And lastly, I butcher slices and more orders because my gouders, my gouders might die in here, but they'll take the enemy with them, that's for sure. So let's go for our evasive flag that we usually do, which is also going to be surprisingly efficient against the enemy because, you know, they're not going to be able to hit us as much. And yeah, the Butcher is dead, but the other ships are still alive, and my gouges are half dead. That's why I, you know, that's why I use this kind of setup instead of the gouges. Even though my ships are obviously taking damage with Hero and taking most of it, but it's still, those ships can take way more fleets before they die than the Which is a point I made tons of times again in the past, but it feels like I... The thing about me in those videos is I always... I don't want to say fear, because that's the wrong war, uh, word, but I always expect being judged, because you have a right to judge me, I'm here to teach you, and if I make a flaw in my reasoning, I either need to explain myself, and maybe show you that it's not a flaw, it's something that I do that might seem wrong is deliberate, or I need to admit that I'm wrong, and just uh, learn as well, along with side of you. Like any teacher would say to you, even though I'm not a teacher, technically speaking, uh, when I whenever you teach somebody anything, you also get taught yourself, and that's pretty very much the case whenever I record those kind of videos. Okay, it looks like there is a system over there. So let's go ahead and try and send out a probe, maybe find a system and go ahead and wait. Actually, I should have sent a probe over there because there definitely is a system over here that would have been a guaranteed hit, and in here I'm a little bit shooting in the dark, which is not necessarily ideal. So there's that. Okay then, let's see, uh, enemy to be killed, that's good. There's, yeah, the you dear say you're, you're not gonna be able to fight this fleet. So, so, yeah, I'll say good luck to you, but uh, that does won't really matter. How about you join in with this fleet, actually? Oh yeah, you can't, because you're stuck in here because of the current ceasefire treaty, I forgot about that thing. Alright, you dear says you murder those guys, you're gonna take some damage, but you're gonna be mostly fine, I believe, even though the hero will be technically speaking killed, but he won't care or notice, actually, so it's gonna be just fine. Yeah, the hero kind of got killed, but he's a hero, so he can be resurrected. And the shield still in tow, but I lost the racks, which uh, nobody really cares about. As long as I still have my hero to guard the rest of my fleet, obviously. Alrighty then, let's see, what else is there to do? The wheel, well, it's out of movement, and it's avoiding instructions, it's gonna probably harass me about something meaningless. And the NY systems, I did forget about that, I'll admit, I can actually start working on big data shipyards as well as track trackable armaments, which I probably should do. 
I don't really care about trackable armor nets, to be entirely honest, but big data shipyards is something that I really do care about, but I'm not gonna go for it on crats, there is really no need to do so. But it looks like I will need another fleet to ensure that like, this time, for real, I capture all of the Kraber systems at once, because I'm running thin of fleets right now. So let's not make the mistake I did last time, and let's make a lot of ships to in order to ensure my victory. And in fact, since the enemy is only using one butcher at a time in each of their fleet, I'm gonna not use any racks whatsoever, instead I'm gonna rely on shields alone. The reason for that being, I don't think the enemy has enough firepower to abuse my lack of protection against myself. So instead I can just mass shields and uh, the enemy should fall down like dominoes with my laser based attack. So that's what that's the kind of approach I'm gonna try to go for now. And keep in mind my shields will have some extra experience which will also give them extra HP and extra defenses. And sure, those missiles, they're gonna hit hard, my, miss my shields will go down relatively quickly without any escorts, but the enemy doesn't really have very powerful fit or technology for that matter, so I'm really not that really afraid of the enemy. Even though, technically speaking, our technologies are probably even when it comes to war side, but I still believe I have more powerful fleets, mostly because of the composition, unfortunately. I say unfortunately because I'm still looking forward to the times when AI is a little bit smarter about pretty much anything, but the cool things have happened. The cool things, as you can see, is in the fact that our hero finally has leveled up to... Oh, oh, wait, what is that? To... Oh, that's... That's a dead rack right there. Anyway, our hero has finally leveled up to a new skill, which I completely forgot about, that he is actually at this point, so right now you have a bunch of pretty decent choice. I mean, I personally am not a fan of the extra movement speed um, the Vodiani because it does allow you to launch some extra surprise assaults, which I do admit is fun, but like this, while it does have some merit, it's... how do I explain this? If you really need to launch a quick assault on the enemy ships, you probably will do it this other way, like for example you equip your ships with extra engines, you try to use wormholes if you are in era 3, and by the time you get to the skill you probably are fairly close to era 3, you use some kind of something else in order to be able to move faster. Being able to move fast, really powerful ability I do admit, but considering that you can also guard systems in this game, which will slow down your fleet by a 10 no matter what, as useful as the skill can be, I don't have too much value in it, so I personally like to go for the extra 50%, uh, not a second, uh, not, not this one, this one, 10% damage on ships, because uh, it actually buffs your ships rather than your ship. At least that's how I always assume this uh, upgrade war works. If it, if it <laughs> actually turns out that this thing buffs your entire fleet and this fleet also buffs your entire fleet, then I'm doing a really silly thing. But I'm pretty sure, I never checked really the dot ini files but i'm pretty sure this thing buffs your fleet and this thing buffs your hero it's just personal preservation i haven't been really able to tell if that's the case or not because we don't really get too much info about the battle results after the battle is over so i wasn't really able to confirm or deny whether this thing applies only to a hero ship or not i do assume it does it would be silly if it didn't and why it's nice to gain a lot of extra damage to a he hero ship because it's actually a very powerful ship when you think about it I do care more about making sure that my sniper ships, that being shields, can dish out additional damage. So I'll do just that. Oh yeah, the battle I cannot actually do anything about. I can retreat though. And I'll do just that, there's no need to have my rack find in there. Where was it actually? Uh, hold on a second. Did the enemy chase me to use it? No, where is there? Oh yeah, I died while I tried to escape. My bad. Didn't it? No, it didn't. Yes, it did. It did try down while trying to escape. Okay then. That's good to know. Well, I'm not really gonna craft this guy. Why do they keep making the expansion ships? There's nowhere to expand to, you dummy. <sighs> okay, uh, let's kill uh, Kraber because we might as well. There's no reason not to, as always. Oh, the, oh, 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 I'm gonna lose a gouge. My bad, there was a reason not to kill him. Although, then again, I do gain extra science and that's from killing things. So I don't care whenever I lose things. As long as the enemy also loses things, that's pretty much the gist of it. Evasive again, it's working fine for me. So let's go ahead and kill that. And kill some more. This just matter, matter everywhere. And what about the truce? We have the same situation as from before. The truce is at zero turns, but it doesn't run out. Which is stupid and silly, but there's nothing we can do about it, unfortunately. So we're just gonna wait here until the truce is truly 
over and I can finally finish murdering the enemy. It's not that bad though, I have to admit, because it gives me time to make some extra shields, which will allow me to make extra sure that the enemy systems all fall as soon as I can destroy them, which would be absolutely lovely. Now, unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about this system, and in fact, I should... No, no, no. I should send a fleet over here to destroy it. Oh, I'm pretty sure... Wait a second. My mothership's... Yeah, my mothership could actually uh, besiege the system and take it over by itself. It is a mothership after all, it's pretty big, it is perfectly capable of doing just that. And Cheng is just a newly established outpost, so it shouldn't really be too much of a problem for me to do anything of the sort. New hero already, that's a problem because I have no idea what kind of hero I need right now, because I pretty much have every kind of hero I need. And that's the kind of thing that I noticed tends to happen happen in, maybe not late game, but late middle game of Endless Space 2 is that you have a lot of heroes and you're like, okay, cool, who do I care about now? I don't know. And that's pretty much my case. Oh, I got uh, Guardians. Uh, I guess I can get a Lumeris guy and show you how he is, but uh, there, okay, okay, yes, I know, battles happen and whatever. Honestly, though, I'm probably not gonna even equip this guy because, I mean, sure, actually, why not? I can equip with Ascent Hint of it. It's a little bit of extra damage. Let's uh, go ahead and inspect him ever slightly. His uh, Lumeris skills, as you can see, debuff both the shields and HP. At least at the lower levels they do. Which is fine. We're not really using shoes right now, but we might as well get it after we get the other skills. And then you can get extra... What's the name for that? Not Prestige. Uh, why do I always keep thinking about prestige? It's influence, there we go, sorry. Sometimes you forget about the most obvious things. Which, you can see why I'm not a big fan of the Lumeris, it's because that's not a um, thing for your fleets, that's not a thing for your fleets. Uh, that is a thing for your f that's actually not a thing for your fleets. There's nothing for your fleets, really, that could allow you to make this a better uh, fleet. Not Admiral, yes, Admiral, that's what I was looking for. So... There is a little point in having this guy, but I didn't want to show him to you guys. And, you know, it's always a ship. And he gives me a bonus to Ecologist Party, which is something, I suppose. I'm gonna give him... Should I switch it up? Should I give him a bunch of lasers to destroy the enemy from long range? Nah, nah. I kind of do want to make sure that once he does start escorting my ships, that being my shoots, he actually can protect them at least somewhat. So I am gonna give him the good old standard kinetic spam and it should be pretty good. In fact, I'm also gonna give him the essence drawing modules because I realized that there's no reason not to. They're not too expensive considering the amount of money I have and they'll give me some extra essence if I need it. I won't really need it. I have plenty more essence than I need, more essence than I currently need, but whatever. All right, Sing is no longer in my area of control, which is kind of annoying. So I just create a new hero and assign him to this fleet right away as soon as I can create it because it's a little bit too big for its own good. That's fine though. Let's let it move slightly and let's assign that hero I just got. There you go, buddy. Now you have your own fleet to play around with. Congratulations, I'm sure you're proud of yourself because I'm not really proud of you. That's very sad, I know. I don't care. And anyway, we're ready to go to War of the Cravens. The question is, do you want to do that right now? Because we would need to get our fleets in the position before we can do anything, and the enemy actually has a sizable army over here. But in reality, is there anything else we could do other than war? Because war is like the most fun thing in the universe to do in your pastime, so let's just go ahead and matter things, and this time, do it for real. So let's matter, and let's make it real, okay? So, uh, yes, we do want to gra uh, grab some extra essence, we do want to fight the enemy on as many fronts as possible. Kill Fi, how is it dying? It's dying at relatively fast pace, so that's good. It's Lara, it's gonna die in the next turn. It already be ready to be killed in the next turn, which is good. Fleets from Sing go to Elyon. Cheng, you, Cheng should be mad in a second, really. Yeah, it's already ready to be captured, so that's good. Okay, Elyon, how are you doing? Elyon is... Uh, it's gonna be ready to be taken over in the next step. Fiedrix, how are you? You're ready to be taken over. There's nobody either, which is a problem, I do admit. I could move away this fleet right now, right now because I have reinforcements to make sure that Alien is gonna fall. So let's send this main fleet to Fiedrix as soon as it matters some fools. Yeah, so, yep, there are some fools ready to be married. That's a lot of gouges I have on my side, so the enemy is definitely gonna regret ever coming close to me. The signs of victory, not really a surprise, honestly. I don't think to anybody at this point. So let's start going towards Muses and Yizio. I believe Yizio, because it's... Actually, Yizio is closer to my systems than Muses is. It's 
deceptive because of its position on the map, but the line between Muses and Yuzo is actually a little bit longer, so I'll go to Muses first. I'll maintain the siege of Felix, although it does have actually no sh no mapa left in it whatsoever, so I might as well just... No, I need to leave my shields and a hero in this place, because otherwise <coughs> this fleet will clear out any of the defenders uh, any of the besiegers of Fiedrich, so I cannot allow myself to make any mistake there or, you know, dishonor the enemy by not, by, by not disrespecting, but what's the word I'm looking for? When you underestimate, there we go, I cannot underestimate my enemy, that's the word I was looking for. Thank you, brain, for trolling me so hard every day of my life, every second since I was born, and probably even before that. Anyway, uh, what's the last technology I want? So let's have a quick look at the systems we have. Uh, there is no reason to establish any kind of trade network. You cannot establish a trade network from Cheng to anywhere else right now, at least at all, because you need to have a trade network within a single constellation. Maybe it will be changed in the future, maybe not. I have no idea if it's intended or not. I could see it either way. I can see the pros and the cons of both options. Either way, we cannot really, I mean, we could go for Trade Company HQ, it just would be really pointless. So what are we gonna go for instead, is the question. A new kind of plan to colonize? Is there anything, any interesting plan for us to colonize? The steps, small steps, there's an monsoon. Why do I want to go to Chang anyway? I don't quite remember. Because I cannot colonize any of those plans right now, because they are within the enemy sphere of influence, and it will take a while for me to remove the sphere of influence, that's why. So Cheng is really my only alternative uh, from Sing. And what does Sing have to offer? It has an ocean, a desert, and a tundra, and an arid. None of those are particularly easy to colonize, and all they offer me is eating incense, and that seems to be about it. Really. So I'm more interested in Cheng. At least that's how it is right now. So, again, let's have a quick look at Cheng. It has steps, monsoon, and more steps. And, well, that's a problem, because I cannot... Wait, I can't. I have steps already. I keep mistaking steps of arid because it does have a very similar icon. As you can see, that's arid. That steps. It's a little bit diff. I mean, similar. If you, if I could say so. Yes, there are some differences. Sure, but both have a cute, adorable little critter on the left side, some mountain terrain on the right side. They're kind of browny, orangey, generally warm colors. Sure, you could tell that steps are a little bit colder, but yeah. Not by much. And I'm also getting confused because I don't remember how in Endless Space 1 Arid was actually really easy to colonize. Now it's very, really, very really hard. So we don't care about steps. We could go for snow. I don't think I have seen a snow plant anywhere. We could go for Boreo or we could go for Ato. Let's have a quick look if we have any of those in my empire. I'm pretty sure we don't because otherwise I would have gone for uh, that already. We've got a desert and we've got an ash. No, another desert. Plenty of deserts. That's annoying. Yeah, I don't think there's anything special waiting for us anywhere here. I could check all the other plants in the Empire, but I'm recording video. I don't have the time to do that. So, I can lower the expansion disapproval. That's completely meaningless and absolutely pointless. I can... I already went for that upgrade. I can... That's useless. I mean, it's... Uh, yeah, poor with production. It really is kind of useless. Although... It does allow me to buy out my ships somewhat. It, the problem is, it busts past this party. Which, sure, Passive's Party is actually pretty good, don't get me wrong, but I don't believe I'll ever be able to unlock them, so it's kind of pointless. Can I buff the Industrious Party any more than I already did with technology? I don't think I can, I can only buff the Passivists at this point. So, or Ecologists, but I don't really care about the Ecologists when it comes to... I mean, I do care about the Ecologists, they actually have some surprisingly good laws, but uh, happiness, food, I don't really need either of those. Yeah, let's buff the pacifist. I doubt I'll be able to unlock them, but at the very least, it's not a useless thing to have. When to cost oh, actually, let's go for depleted isotopes instead. It gives me more variety. It gives me access to a missile type of ship if I need it, and I might need it against the Sophons. And also allows me to upgrade gouges for extra awesomeness. So yeah, let's go ahead and grab it. I keep forgetting that I am extraordinarily lucky and have access to pretty much all resources I can possibly desire. So yeah, let's go for that thing. Did I declare war on the enemy already? Yes, I did. Yeah, because I started besieging their systems. <laughs> it's kind of funny to me at the very least. It's like, okay, I started shooting you, but wait, did I attack you already? And the enemy is dying in the corner being like, well, yeah, duh, dude, you're stabbing my throat right now. I have no idea how I'm able to speak. 
I would should certainly say that you are trying to cue me, and I'm like, oh yeah, okay, fine, cool, thanks for clarifying that. And then I'll cut you to stab the bastard because I'm really, really evil. Uh, I'm bringing, I'm really making the body any proud, in my honest opinion. All right, those gouders, they are not in for. Oh well, never mind. The enemy ran away like the cowards they are, and they're going in for sing. But I do have a fleet waiting to greet them over there, so it should not be a problem. The enemy should be mad at. Now, it's kind of weird, the situation we're in, because we have middle... Actually, this is perfect, because middle ships range... Okay, let's mid and then Again, middle ships in medium range, so they will not be shot at the enemy too much. And at short range, we have the hero protecting the other ship, and this is where the enemy will fire its missiles at. So, it should be pretty perfect. Now, unfortunately, those ships will be engaged pretty quickly, so they will not be able to fire the lasers, but whatever. It should be pretty fine. Let's see how well those do. The triple shield setup, it should do absolutely amazingly! Man, I wrecked the enemy, holy balls! So what happened is that, I mean, I can't show it to you. I wish I actually went into... Uh, I showcased this battle to you, because I could show you exactly what happened, but I'll explain to you what happened. So, the enemy, since they didn't have a good firing arc, on the those ships, they probably did deal some damage. Yeah, they did deal some damage with uh, the missiles. But the Butcher mostly focused on this lane, because that's the lane it could fire more comfortably at. And at this lane, what do I have? A flagship filled with kinetics that were shooting down the enemy missiles. So, yeah, the enemy really didn't accomplish much over there. And I was able to pepper the enemy with my lasers, so there's that. Also, my ships have high experience level by now. Which means that they are actually pretty effing powerful. So yeah, that's uh, that's me winning the fight right there. That's me winning the war, in fact. Uh, let's start sending my ships to Yizo. Uh, did they? Did you hear me? Oh, you have no more movement left. I see. Well, in that case, you don't have to go, I suppose. Let's send those ships to Sing. Let's make a few more ships. I could make culture centers. I mean, I certainly could. It would give me a ton of influence, but. Uh, that's the problem I have with Endless Space 2 Economy right now. What do I do with all this influence? I, there's literally nothing for me to do with this influence. I really like it in Endless Legend. It always feels like influence is very precious and you have very little of it. Unless you you create a surgery as to be centered on influence. Then you had it, but otherwise you never really would. Especially after the addition of Espionage. But in here it's like, it's garbage. I don't care about it. I don't need it for anything. It's Why is it here? Why does it exist? I don't know. I have no use for it, so that would definitely have to change. Meanwhile, let's make some more shields. Because shields are fun to make. Alright, then there's that. You extract some essence while you can, because, I mean, there's no reason not to. How fast will Alien fall? Alien is gonna die pretty quickly. I should probably move this fleet a little bit further ahead. Let's have a quick look. I'm starting the Siege of Felix. I have some movement left to get to Muses. Uh, so let's see. I can't get to Muses in one turn, apparently. So let's go ahead and do just that, so I'll be able to take it over, hopefully. And the enemy has no defenders over there whatsoever, so that's good. Let's start to the system. Alion has pretty much nobody. And I'm gonna send in this fleet from Sync to finish it off, so that's good. So I need to send somebody to Yuzo right away, so I'll send you to Yuzo. And I'll send you to Elion. And I'll send you to sing and then make a decision on what to do with you next. And I should be able to finish my operation bef procedure before the enemy actually forces a truce on me. I hope. Oh, hey, we just got <gasps> Nice, anti -mah Wait a second. What era are we in? We're still in era 2. How do I see anti -mahar? I don't know. I don't care. Anyway, we see that there is anti right, on Pollux. Which is actually an empty system with nobody in it. There is an atoll, atoll, and a swamp. And there is. If I had to gain control of the system, I had to gain access to both of era two strategic resources. There are prior priorities. And this system is my priority right now because if I gain control of it, do you know what happens then? That is what happens then. Absolute devastation! <laughs> Let's do it! I'm gonna get Pollux if it's the last thing I do, and spoiler alert, it probably definitely will not be the last thing I do. In fact, 
Who cares about Chang? You just say, have a date with Destiny. You're going to Pollux right now. You're on a priority call, Missy. You're gonna have to get there quick, or else I'm gonna murder you in the most brutal, violent way possible. All ships in the region move to Pollux. I don't want anybody, anybody else whatsoever in this galaxy daring come close to this system. I'm gonna sap it of all I have the moment I see some filthy little outposts get close to it. Gurkha, you. I mean, I could get another mothership, but I don't care. I want everything I can to ensure that nobody gets Pollux before I can. It's my system by no right, really, but I want it really badly, and that's good enough in my eyes. Alright? Alright. Let's end the turn for now. And next turn, we should. I mean, not this turn, but the turn after this, we should be able to finish off the Craver. So that depends on how many defenders are in Yuzo, but I don't expect them to be very many, to be entirely honest with you. So there is gonna be that, and I think it's also gonna be a pretty decent cliffhanger. If you ask me to finish the video right here, right now, and be like, did I manage to kill the Cravers before they forced truce on me? Or did they fail completely and did they actually matter me instead? Uh, that, I mean, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> In almost, I'm kinda certain about it, but uh, you know, you never know. So there is that. Ladies and gentlemen, it was Poncho. So Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you online.